This has got to be the most expensive watch a microbrand has lent me. And I think it's a watch that really speaks for itself. It's the newer Manta Ocean King version 3. And let's just take it in for a second. Because this thing is magnificent. With a beautiful inky black dial, terrific finishing, and one of the best bracelets around. It's definitely one that feels like a subby, as it balances a tool watch core with levels of refinement. Which is something we'll talk about in a bit, because some might see this as one of the watch's few negatives. But that said, let's start things off by talking about the specs. And for this one, Manta went with a 40.5mm case with a 48mm lug to lug. A fairly standard size these days. However, it's worth noting that the fantastic bracelet comes with female end links, and those bring the effective lug to lug down a bit to around 46, helping this to wear just a tad smaller while still maintaining quite a presence. The total thickness here is good at 12.2, and that is from the back of the closed case back to the top of the flat sapphire with AR. There's also 300 meters of water resistance with a sign screw down crown and it comes in at a weight of 155 grams on its bracelet. Give or take a link or two. And to me, that seems to really hit the sweet spot in the hand as well as on the wrist, where it's a little bit lighter than some of the heavier, beefier divers I've seen, but not too light. It's kind of in that Goldilocks zone, where it still has a good quality feel to it. I know it's kind of an odd way to describe that, but if you've ever handled a lot of divers, I think you know exactly what I mean. And of course, we can't forget that this is powered by Manta's M22 movement, which is really just a Sleeta SW300. And as a side note, I'm not a big fan when brands decide to hide the actual movement with their own name. But they are using an optimized version here, which does extend the power reserve out to 56 hours. So spec-wise, it's pretty much what you want, and more importantly, what you would expect with an MSRP of 2500 bucks. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit too. However, before we get into it, I do think it's important to point out that I haven't seen the previous two versions of the Ocean King. Like I said, this is version 3. So I'm approaching this with fresh eyes, and I can't really help you with what's different here. Although, in case you didn't notice, I am wearing my Triumph, which means I do have some experience with Manta, and I might make some comparisons on how this differs from that in the design language. That, and I should also point out that this is a press sample that was lent out to me, so it is one that's been around a little bit. But I think it still looks pretty pristine. Now, once you take everything in here, I think you start to see that this is a watch that stands on its own. But at first glance, it is a bit sub-like. And in a lot of ways, that does make a lot of sense. If you're going for a more elegant diver, or as Monta says, one where refinement seeks simplicity, then a sub is exactly what everyone looks to. It's the standard, it's what they think about when they think that. And whether or not this is a good or bad thing is really going to depend on you. If you're wanting something more original, more Manta-like, then yeah, it's a negative. But if you want something that's sub-like, yet not a sub, even a retro sub, this could be perfect. Regardless, the fit and finish here is top-notch. That's one of the things Manta is known for with a nice brushing on the top, a very polished midline, and a polished chamfer sitting between the two. And even though you have polish next to polish here, there's still a clean and clear division. On the right, you have some subtle crown guards with a crown-shaped crown, if that makes any sense. It's one of Monta's things, and it is easier to see on the Triumph where there aren't any crown guards, but the same thing is here too. The main thing is to know that the crown looks good, and it has a good grip with its knurling. Now, one of the things I'm not a fan of, and I've said this before and I'll undoubtedly say it again, is that I don't like polished sides on a diver. I vastly prefer brushed. It looks more tooly, and I think it wears better in the long run. Which is why some people have taken to put those cheesy clear protectors on the sides of their subs and black bays. Yes, I know why you're doing it, I agree with that, and heck, I'd probably do it too. But it's still kind of cheesy which is one of the reasons I think the best diver case design around is Seiko's Marine Master. Sleek, refined, a little bit different, and durable, with a nice polished chamfer just to show it all off. And that brings up another thing that I think the Ocean King is missing. A hardened coating would be really nice here. 
And that is something that's becoming more and more common. But that is a whole other tangent, and let's just move on to the bezel. The bezel here has a dark black ceramic insert to match the dial. And it's easily one of the best bezel actions I've run across. They say it's patent pending, I'm not sure what's different, but it's great. 120 click, unidirectional, no back play, just clicky perfection. Where there's a little bit resistance, but not too much, and just a clean, crisp break. So it's great. And the only thing I'd like is if that the insert was fully loomed, just to give it some more interesting character at night. That, and one of the other things that I wish Mont had done, is something that's on my Triumph, where there's a small polished chamfer just on the inside of the lugs. It's a small thing, but it's a Monta thing, and I love how it perfectly lines up with the polished edge of the bracelet, creating this beautiful cohesive line. But maybe here they just wanted a crisp and clean transition between the case and the bracelet. Speaking of which, if there's one thing Monta knows, it's bracelets. And this is one of the best I've seen. It is an oyster style, so not necessarily very original. But the finish is fantastic. And I love how every link is fully articulating, including the female end links. The taper is great, and it leads to Monta's milled clasp with their on-the-fly adjustment system. One that's a little glidey-like, but is a little bit different. And the design of the clasp here is killer. It's different, maybe more curved and a bit longer than the one on my Triumph. So it's great, but not exactly perfect. There's one issue that I've seen where the edges of the clasp are a tad sharp. Mostly the beginning and the end, not the sides. At a lower price point, I wouldn't really complain, but here it just seems completely out of place compared to the rest of the watch. So it's a little confusing, as everything else is smooth to the touch. But all in all, throw everything together, and it's well-balanced and perfectly conforms my 7 quarter inch wrist, which is really what ultimately matters. That's in the dial. This thing is gorgeous. With its deep, dark, black lacquer finish, one you could get lost in. For the most part, it is a pretty familiar design, with a combination of applied bars spread throughout, and whatever you want to call this thing at the top. It's not exactly a triangle, more like a wedge of cheese. Then on the outer edge, you have a fine but expertly painted chapter ring, surrounding everything before hitting a plain stainless riot. Like everything with the Ocean King, it's a straightforward yet refined design. One that's familiar, but just a little bit different. The applied indices have a decent height, but aren't too tall, all while the polished framing catches the light and your attention as do the sword-style hands, which are also brilliantly finished, and ever so slightly angled just to give them depth. There is a little bit of text on the dial, you can't really get away from that, but the font is small and subtle enough it doesn't really distract, and it lines up symmetrically with the frame date at the 6. And before anyone says how this needs a color match date wheel, I actually really like how this works, as the white box works with the larger indices at the cardinal points creating more of a crosshair effect that guides your focus right in. In short, doesn't look out of place at all. And as for the loom, loom is great. Nice and bright with a blue BGW-9. And it's easily able to outlast a Seiko Diver, both my monster and don't even get me started on my Glacier Marine Master. So as a whole, I think the design is fantastic. It's clean, clear, easy to read, with every component amazingly done especially the beautiful black dial. I love the symmetry here with the date, as well as the sword handset with perfect lengths, going out to exactly where they should. It comes across as a modern mill sub done right, which I think a lot of people can appreciate. And for me, if I was looking for a black dial diver, which honestly I kinda am, this is exactly what I'd want in a watch. Design-wise, I like this a lot more than a modern sub. Yet, at the same time, it is worth asking if this is too sub-like, too homage because at this price point, there are a lot of options out there, and many of which have more distinct designs, and that's something the Ocean King is definitely lacking. But ultimately, is this a bad thing? And that, I think, is the real question, and it's one I'm not sure about. I'm not sure there is a right answer. 
Because if you haven't noticed, there is a huge hypocrisy among us watch enthusiasts where we want something like that, but not quite like that. Although if you go too far and change it too much, we don't want it at all because at that point it's weird. We're picky, we're fickle, and a lot of times there's no way to win. At least not with everybody, and oftentimes the best way forward is to play it safe. Tutor is a perfect example of this. Their recent success is built on a sub-style design with the Black Bays, or even with the Ranger, which is really their version of an Explorer. Yet take a look at the PO-1, which is perhaps one of the more interesting divers out there. And in terms of sales, it's like the redheaded stepchild of the brand. I mean, how often do you ever hear anyone saying they bought that over a 58 or a Pelagos? So I don't know. This whole thing is a huge discussion. And like I said, I'm not sure there is a right answer. But let me know down below what you're thinking, whether you think this is a problem or you think it's perfect as it is. My main point though, and what I'm trying to get across to you guys, is that for the price, the quality you're getting here is amazing. That's the watch's strength, not so much design. And I think it's similar to where Formex is and maybe Oris was before they brought out the Caliber 400. All of which have watches at this price point, which are great buys. Ones with quality that starts to touch the lower levels of luxury without the associating price. And that the only thing really holding those watches back is that they're using off-the-shelf movements over specialty in-house ones. Which, once again, isn't necessarily all bad, as using a Salita makes their watches more accessible and a whole lot easier to get repaired. Bottom line, I'd tweak a few things, but still an amazing watch as it is, and perhaps the finest diver at this price. And for many of you out there, this could be your Goldilocks watch. One with an ideal balance between presence and comfort, refinement and tooliness, as well as quality in the thickness of your wallet. Now, the biggest comment I always see when it comes to Manta, as well as Manta reviews, is usually along the lines of, why would you ever buy this when you could spend a little bit more and get a tutor? So that's something I wanna talk about. And first off, we're not exactly talking a little bit more. MSRP on a Black Bay is closer to four grand right now. Well, this is only two and a half, but it's still a good question. And I think the answers here are gonna be the same as if you were to ask someone looking at buying an Oris, either an Aquas or 65, why they'd buy that. As they all kind of exist in this very awkward price range, one that's a little bit above the higher end mainstream brands, it's still lower than the entry level luxury. And as an owner of an Aquas, well, the short version is that it really boils down to three things. There's the value argument, which really appeals to the practical among us. As I for one believe that just because you can do something doesn't mean you always should do something. Then there's the design argument, that you like some of the particulars here better than there. Or in this case, you love the lack of a snowflake and a rivet bracelet. And lastly, there are those that just don't want to follow the pack the contrarians out there, and I'm kind of one of those. Where to us, we know they're great, but they're known quantities. And I personally just want to see what else is out there and try something different. After all, if we all did the same thing in this hobby, it'd get pretty boring pretty quick. I mean, honestly, how many videos can you watch with stock images of a new white Speedmaster or the new GMT Black Bay? Now, as for how this compares to the Aquas itself, well, I'm gonna say that the dials are pretty close, with I think the Manta coming out just slightly ahead, all thanks to the deep black lacquer finish. Beyond that, the Manta still has a better bezel action, better loom, much nicer finishing on the case, better bracelet, and a far superior clasp, which also has a better movement with an optimized SW300, complete with a 56 hour power reserve, while the regular Aquas is based on the standard SW200. Now, there is also the Caliber 400 movement, which is actually what I'm showing you, but that is at a higher price point, one that's a little bit more closer to the Tudor. And as for the regular Aquas, or even the regular Diver 65, if you think those are worth the price, then the Manta definitely is. The only area that the Aquas really beats the Ocean King is in a more original design. But this design isn't exactly one everyone likes. Which is why they have the Diver 65, and why people keep asking why I bought this over a Tudor. Anyway, it's an amazing watch, and if you like the design, that's really what matters. 
Now, as usual, let me know your thoughts. And if you can think of a watch that does it better for less, mention that as well. And as always, do something down below, like, comment, subscribe, you know the deal. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.